When you think of Halloween, you typically think of two things. Monsters and parties. And candy, I guess. But that really messes with my segue, so throwing that aside for the moment, I want to talk about an NES game that brings those two October staples together. Monster Party. Monster Party was developed by Human Entertainment and published by Bandai for the NES in 1989. Despite the title and my charmingly worded intro, Monster Party actually doesn't have anything to do with parties, but there are definitely monsters. Lots and lots of monsters. The game begins innocently enough, with the hero Mark being visited by an otherworldly creature named... Bert, who charges him with the task of saving his planet from an onslaught of evil monsters, simply because he mistakes Mark's baseball bat as some kind of weapon. The first level doesn't seem too bad, there's plenty of color and some cheery music, and then BAM! It all goes to hell. Literally. So you traverse these eight stages as young Batman Mark, fighting tons of different monsters along the way. What makes the level so interesting in this game are the sheer amount of bosses you have to tangle with. Scattered throughout each level are boss rooms you need to clear before you can advance, and they're all quite unique, from an eggplant that's clearly a parody of Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, to a piece of shrimp tempura that turns into an onion ring, and then some other kind of food I can't recognize. Still looks pretty good though. Even weirder are the ones who don't seem to serve any purpose, like the giant spider who says, Sorry, I'm dead, or the zombies who really just want you to check out their dance routine. And now that I'm thinking about it, is that a thriller reference? I hope so. Gameplay is pretty much what you'd expect from an NES game, with lots of jumping and swinging your bat to attack. What's super fun, though, is that you can use your bat to knock projectiles back at enemies, which is something you'll need to get pretty good at before you tangle with most of the bosses. Even better is that it just feels really good to do, and it comes complete with a really satisfying sound effect. Finding capsule power-ups will allow you to control Bert for a limited time, letting you fly and shoot fireballs that deal heavy damage. Playing as Bert would be a lot of fun, but since he has no way to deflect projectiles, he's at a disadvantage against several bosses. Aside from that, the game seems to dispense the power-ups when you need them the least, so by the time you get to a point where you need the firepower, it's already wearing off. Still, it's a very nice boost to have, and will let you get through the tougher portions of some stages much more easily. Also, fun fact, Monster Party is where planking was invented. If I had to describe Monster Party in one word, it'd be... weird. The whole game is pretty bonkers, what well, with its crazy monsters and nonsensical story. But it's what gives the game its charm, and it's a big part of why you should play it. I'm a big fan of the boss encounters, partly because they're so crazy, and partly because I just love the one-liners I say when you enter the room. The whole game is just so imaginative. While a lot of the common enemies are supposed to be based on popular movie monsters and creatures from folklore, the developers definitely went the extra mile to make them their own. Like the Elephant Man who is a literal Elephant Man. Part of the fun of exploring each level is discovering what crazy enemies you'll run into next. On top of all that, the game is just a lot of fun to play. The controls are solid, and like I mentioned before, hitting things with Mark's bat just feels so good. The levels are all pretty well designed, except for the maze of doors at stage 6. You'll definitely need a map. But overall, they don't really get in your way too much or overstay their welcome. The game is pretty tough. I had to cheat to beat the final boss, but it's Nintendo hard, so practice, practice, practice. There's a password system though, so don't worry about losing your progress. The game's graphics are pretty impressive for an NES game, with some really nice sprites, especially on the large bosses. One of my favorite graphical tricks was on the Chameleon Man boss, who blends in with the background and forces you to keep an eye on him for the entire fight. The game's music is another high point, and although there are some tunes that grate on you after a while, again, level 6, bleh, overall it's a very pleasing audio experience that makes good use of the NES's sound capabilities. On a final note, the game seems to wiggle around a lot of Nintendo censorship policies from the era, with plenty of images of blood and pretty twisted animation during the game's ending. Also look! A church! The game never came out in Japan, but a prototype Famicom version called Parody World Monster Party was leaked online in 2001 that shows the game was watered down a bit for the North American release. For more on that, be sure to check out The Gaming Historian's excellent retrospective. Monster Party is what I'd consider a must-own NES game. It's got it all. Solid gameplay, tons of imagination, high production values, and you can easily get it for under $10, so there's no excuse to not work this into your Halloween rotation. Monster Party is a really fun game that's got a flavor all its own. There are parts that will have you twisting your controller in frustration, but overall it's an incredibly solid title that's just a lot of fun. It's fun to play, it's fun to look at, and it's fun to talk about. 
Don't pass it up.